let's get into our uh, feature presentation. It's looking at franchises where the movies have done relatively well and been popular at the cinema, but when people have left the cinema, they haven't gone to the toy aisles at all. This next one is an absolute mind spin because you think, oh, this franchise has been around for 30 years prior or maybe even 40 years prior, and you think this has got winner written all over it. The film was a massive success, made a shitload of money. Everybody, not except me, loved it. And believe it or not, the collectibles tanked, and it was this, Star Trek. Star Trek, the reboot, which is um, amazing because, you know, love it or hate it, it was a big box office success. Um, mm -hmm. It did well, and you would have thought that the merchandise would have sold better than it did. So it's worth noting for people who are watching the show, uh, we need to clarify that there would be things that some people bought, just not a lot of people bought them, right? So it's not like they say like every single item was not touched by a human being. It would have been some people who bought some of the dolls and the figures and whatever. But in terms of what they produced versus what they sold, it's a very, very disproportionate number as opposed to saying, oh, we can't get these things out fast enough where they're just walking off the shelves. That is the the the, the ultimate of uh, merchandising where you, like you have to produce different waves and series because there's a demand for it whereas obviously for Star Trek the demand uh, just wasn't theirs. And they did produce a lot of merchandise for this movie it was everywhere, it was on all the covers of the magazines and you can see there's JJ again getting his own cover above the actual Star Trek cast um, <laughs> but maybe the merchandise sold in the Kelvin timeline because it didn't sell in our reality that's for sure <laughs> It's a dead set winner, you would think you've got Kirk, Spock the rest of the crew that are already cultural phenomenons. You've gone with new Hollywood actors. At the time, they weren't as well known as they are now, but you you have um, Chris Pine, who's his own star now, and you have Zachary Quinto, who was in um, Heroes, I think, and quite popular yep. and known, yep. known from that. Um, all the secondary cast were quite well known. Uh, they're an attractive cast to merchandise. They were all over the media merchandising the movie, so obviously the knock-on for that is you get free advertising for your toys. And there were aisles in Kmart and Toys R Us of the new Star Trek figures. And you know what? I think it just made the old ones sell better. It is one of those things where they did not sell them. A year after they came out, I remember going into Kmart and they had almost exactly the same display and they were all marked down about 80%. And then I found out at Toy Fair from one of the licensees that they were all shipped back to the company and the company couldn't even sell them, you know, through the reject shop or anything. And they all ended up as landfill. See, the funny thing is, uh, and doing the promo for this episode, we had said that clearly when these things die in the ass, someone didn't do their market research. And the market research has shown in the history of Star Trek, collectibles generally don't sell that well. There's just no demand. People love the shows. They love the movies. They love all the stuff. But buying toys isn't their thing. We don't know why. Maybe it's not a kid's thing. It's more of an adult's thing. The playability isn't there because you're not shooting the shit out of all the bad guys. You're exploring the universe as, you know, uh, yeah. space-faring, uh, peaceful people. And I would argue that a children who are playing with a lot of the toys do focus on more violent, whether it be on a subconscious level, more violent-related films than anything else. Now, I don't know. I'd have to sit back and do some I, research I, on it. But I, I think totally, that might have something to do with it. Sorry, I, go for it. I totally, totally agree with you there because that's absolutely true. The one thing I think about that, though, is what is the closest that Star Trek got to being a Star Wars-like movie with action and fast-paced and lasers and stuff? It was the movie that we're looking at mm. where, you know, there were mm. space battles and there was running around fast and, like, jumping out of ships. And it was a, a much more action-packed, faster-paced mm. version of Star Trek and it still didn't excite kids to buy the, buy the toys, did it? I would argue that if the rest of the franchise never existed and Star Trek in 2009 was the first iteration of Star Trek, yeah, things may have been different. And, and the other thing they did, yeah. which I think is a big mistake, when they released it, they released it simultaneously in three different scales. So they didn't they didn't double down, they tripled down. So they released it in action figure Star Wars scale, the three and a three and a quarter. And then they released it in like Star Wars Black series where you've got like the Marvel Legends size. And then they also released 12 inch figures of this stuff. So they really thought that it was going to be flying off the shelves and it really didn't.
right in the centre there, we've got good old JJ, the pop vinyl, which I think did come out after this, actually, but I put him there as a bit of a joke. Yeah. But you can see they even released um, Star Trek Barbie dolls based on the new movie. And, of course, they'd already released the, the Kirk and Uhura version from the 60s, which were quite popular and quite collectible. And these ones, again, didn't sell. They're, they're hard to find on the secondary market because nobody bought them. And when they turn up, they don't go for very much. They released... Um, transporter play sets, they released the bridge, they re released the new version of the Enterprise, they released prop replicas of phases and things like that, and across the board, just didn't sell. With a lot of toys, eventually they become collectible in their own right just because they're hard to find. And you do wonder how far into the future before people start coming in saying, I want the J.J. Abrams version of Star Trek toys, but I have to say, I have never had a single person ask for them. 